Oh, he said he was going to be in Melbourne overnight. I'll try him on his mobile. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, sorry, I must have a wrong number. I was after Jeff Parrish. Right, well, when he gets out of the shower, can you tell him that the winery's been broken into and he needs to meet the police there? Mount Thomas 900 to Mount Thomas 509. My father's taking a shower at his accountant's house, but once he gets his pants on, he'll not out join you. Am I missing something? My father's accountant's named Shaley Sims. She's the same age I am and built like every pathetic middle-aged man's fantasy. I don't suppose you've got her phone number. Hey, look, there could be half a dozen innocent explanations. Name one. They're going to need my help at the winery. Yeah, boss, go on. Name one. Joe! I thought you were fingerprints. Yeah, they're on their way. So uh, what have we got here? I think I've got a constable sticking her bib in. I just thought I could help her. Dad! So glad you had your mobile on. Hello, uh, Jeff. Okay. If we uh, could just establish what's missing. I'll handle this, Jeff. Shall we? Look, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry you had to find out about Shaley this way. Yeah, well, I'm not your mother. Not your wife, either. Mind you, my mother is. Funny, that. I was trying to find the right way to tell you. Yeah, well, it's just so demeaning, lying to me like you're a teenager. Anyway, you better come inside, see what's missing. Obviously, the computer. It's a Pentium 2 and laser printer. I can give you the serial numbers on both of those. Mm-hmm. They've ratted the petty cash tin. It's $137.60. That's very precise. Oh, Shaley's always precise. She's the best accountant I've ever had. Thank you. Well, it's true. <coughs> but they've burned. I, um, I couldn't say it. Well, I need a complete list of the stolen items. Sure. Oh. Jeff, uh, how long has Shaley been with you? Uh, six months. I decided with the plumbing business and the winery I needed someone full-time and she came highly recommended. Oh. oh, come on, it wasn't her. Look, she's very well paid and her own computer's worth far more than the missing one. Oh, well, I wasn't implying anything. And, uh, if it's about our personal relationship, then I don't think you're in a position to talk, Detective. I'm not the one running around breaking young women's hearts. <clears throat> You'd prefer to talk to someone else. Look, it was obviously kids after a free computer and any cash that was going. Or maybe an ex-employee. Well, no one's been fired lately. Well, what about the person that Ms Sims replaced? Well, there wasn't one. The Hales did their own accounts. You know, <laughs> shoebox, uh, cash book. Talk about a mess. Well, you separated from your wife and you got yourself a young girlfriend. Uh, any hard feelings there? Oh, well, Bev's supposed to have done this for revenge. Is there a divorce pending between you two? Uh, yeah, it's... It's an option. Look, I really don't want this leaking back to Joe, OK? I mean, there's no possible connection. Well, there might be if there was a disagreement over the book value of the winery. All right. So now I'm supposed to be trying to diddle Bev out of her entitlements. Jeff, look, look we, we, we're just trying to find a motive here. Now, do you have any problems with business competitors? No. Look, it's, it's, it's an inconvenience, OK? But well, that's all. We'll simply reload the accounts from the backup. The backup discs were on the premises last night. They were on the desk next to the computer. The backup discs? Oh, no, I didn't think to look. Neither did Jeff. What was on these backup discs? Same as the computer. Accounts, inventory, GST, excise, you name it. But you keep several copies off the premises? Of course we do. It's standard operating procedure. But yesterday we found that some had been erased. So we brought the whole lot into back up again. And you did? And we did. Then, um... Then? Well, then, uh, you know, things started to happen between me and Shaley. As they do. So we uh, went back to her place and in the heat of the moment forgot to take the discs with us. 
If divorce is in the air, it goes towards a motive. What? <laughs> Bev Parrish trashing her husband's office? I, I, I don't think so. Or Jeff trying to doctor up a lower book value on the winery before the property settlement goes through. With Jeff and Miss Sims providing each other's alibis, perhaps we'd better ask Joe's opinion. Uh, Jeff really didn't want Joe to hear any divorce talk. Ah. What would be his motive for that? My father's a suspect. Or my mother. Get real. I think the point PJ's trying to make is that people going through a divorce sometimes well, act in ways which are normally foreign to what, them. What, they're divorcing? I don't know. We can't rule it out. Well, how could they do that without consulting me? Mate, they probably wanted to break it to you gently. It's a bit shaly, isn't it? Well, she has been alibied by your father. Oh, men. Not enough blood to run the brain and the groin at the same time. Oh, if I was to say something like that about women, I'd be up in front of a tribunal. Yeah, well, wait till I get home tonight. No, 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 no. You, you, your father didn't want you to hear any divorce talk yet. Why not? Because he knew how you'd react. Face it, he's a sensible man. He's scared of you. Oh, oh. I can be cool. Getting younger by the day, Dad. Dressing smarter. Cooking without a barbecue. Reiki massage. Now they recognise you. People are allowed to grow. What book's that from? Divorce is the key to personal development. I asked PJ not to talk about that. Why was it a secret? What are you going to tell me? I mentioned it to him as one possible option. OK. Look, Bev and I, we talked about telling you, but... Another one he had the guts. If it happens, it'll happen in a very civilised way, right? Minimum drama. And he knew if you told me it'd be maximum drama. Hey, I didn't say that. No, well, just a bit of honesty, some discussion. Look, we already know what you think. We didn't need to discuss it with you. Not so much of a family. Oh, come on, get it into your head, Joe. Any divorce, if that's what we decide, is our decision, right? It's not yours. I just wish you'd told me. Well, I'm sorry. You know, PJ thought uh, Bev might have done the burglary. <laughs> Pay to do that one. No. I can't see Bev as an office trasher, can you? I mean, I can see her cutting the sleeves off his suit or putting an old fish in his car or something. <laughs> Remind me never to break up with you. Is that really how you all see me? But you're right, I didn't trash Jeff's office. Hey, Bev? Did you hit down? Oh, late last night. She arrived at ten. We had a nightcap. She went to bed. All right. Alone, more's the pity. No alibi then. Should I start to get worried at this point? The innocent have nothing to fear. Heard that before. So, how's Joe? What, you, you've, you've been in town since last night? You haven't made contact? <sighs> I've been squibbing it. Jeff thinks news of the divorce had come better from me than him. Oh. I think you're fine. She's already up to speed on that one. You still love her, so why divorce? Just decided we needed... Needed space. I moved out into the flat. I'm saying it's not you, it's me. Actually, that was what your mother said. Oh, that smells wonderful, Bobo. Hi, Joe. Are you joining us for dinner? Bobo? That's my pet name for him. You're my Bobo one, no, she don't. <laughs> it's like Bobo the Clown, is it? <coughs> of course not. Yo, I think I might eat out. It's a better look than throwing up right here in the kitchen, don't you think? Curtains, the world can see you. She's angry with me. She feels I forced Jeff out. Did you? It was mutual. Hey. Yeah, uh, your mum was about to phone you. Right. Just, uh, just be gentle. Separations aren't easy. Yeah, well, you're a real expert on separations, aren't you? Shouldn't you be with your girlfriend? (sighs) 
So when are we going to tell me about the divorce? That's why I'm here. You pushed Dad out of the house. You send him crazy and he ends up meeting Miss January, the accountant. I mean, what were you thinking, Mum? Has something gone wrong between you and PJ? What? I, I thought you two were, you know, I thought there was something... Yeah, well, there isn't. If, anyway, the subject is you and Dad. You still love him, don't you? Yes. Well, and he still loves you. I don't know that. Well, I know that. You don't want this divorce. Neither of you do. You've obviously met Shaylee by now. Yeah. That's not serious, it's just... What, sex, male menopause, midlife crisis? You've got to fight for him, Mum. <sighs> I don't know how. Well, listen to yourself, you've already given up. <sighs> What's this about PJ's girlfriend? Mum, that's a completely different issue. I'm trying to oh, talk to you. Oh, always difficult to listen to you talk. This guy was watching Dad's house, or waiting for Shaylee, or, or both. And you think there's some connection to the book? Well, there's something sus going on. I saw what I saw. She could be your stepmother. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah, take it easy, right. Terence Lilo Rourke, I believe he's one of yours. Yeah, I'm after an address and name of his employer. What, what's your uh, interest in Tezzo Rourke? He's the lowlife who met with Shaylee at the bowling club. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Bye. Are you sure? Yeah, I did a rego check on the van, ran him through Leap and um, rang around the parole officers. Why, you know him? Yeah, I got him two years for trafficking speed. Must be just out. Yeah, two months living back in Mount Thomas and working for, guess who? Derek Hobson. Derek Hobson, my builder. Small world, eh? Tessa O'Rourke is working on my house? <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you believe in rehabilitation? And he's thick with Shaley Sims? Well, it certainly looked like it. Did you take a trip to the building site? <laughs> Where is everyone? What, are you paying them? Paying? I'm paying them, all right. Well, at least they've laid the form work for the slab. It's not a bad job. So why haven't they done the poor? I was probably just waiting for the concrete. You were in the building trade too long, Jones. You know the excuses by heart. Ah, just the man I was looking for. I've just come from the building site. Nothing's happening. We've put up the formwork. See? Yeah, but someone's forgotten to pour the concrete into it. Looked a bit like rain, so we... Farmers would be pleased to hear about that. Yeah, and it was... Don't go on. I just want to know why that drug-dealing piece of dog offal, Tezza O'Rourke, is working on my house. I can explain that. He's a... Company. Your tragedy, not mine. He's a good bloke. He got off drugs while he's in jail. In the break. That'd be a first. He's a good worker. He's on the program. I don't give a rats. Where is he? Actually, I'm not sure. He went off on some private business, but I'll tell him you're looking. Sure. 
Hey guys, I had a bit of luck this morning. I uh, turned up some old backup discs, so we should be in pretty good shape soon. I'll see you tonight. Yeah, can I have a word, Dad? Last night there was a van parked out the front. Uh, did a rego check and it belongs to a local crook. He's got prize for trafficking. Or well, maybe he lives in the street. Yeah, no, I later saw him at the bowling club talking to Shaylee. I'm pretty certain she passed him a large amount of cash. You've been following Shaylee? Well, yeah, yeah. Wow. Police force has really changed you. I can't believe a daughter of mine has stooped this low. Look, I'm happy, Joanna. I try and understand that and stop interfering with my life. Cesar O'Rourke broke his poor mother's heart. If anyone sees him, I'd like a word. Uh, so would I. Looking up your father's girlfriend on Leap is a big no-no, Constable. She was seen handing a large sum of money to someone with a prior for trafficking. Father's girlfriend? He's too old to have a girlfriend. Anyway, I've already checked out Shaylee and your dad. But you check out dad? He hasn't got any form. Oh, yeah, he's got some priors. What? Yeah. Late 60s, mid 70s? Anti Vietnam War rallies. The Whitlam dismissal, he went to Demites. Oh, and Shaylee's got nothing relevant. Not true. Two counts of drive in a manner dangerous, obviously road rage. And she comes up twice as a victim where cars she owned were either stolen or torched. Probably insurance Or fraud. she's a bad driver, had two cars stolen. Bottom line is don't look up your father's girlfriend on Leap unless you want Monica Draper on your back. You're not going to ignore the money she gave to Tezza? No, I'm not. Well, can I come with you? No, you can't. Jones? I, uh, I was wondering if you uh, know this bloke. Terence Lilo Rourke, he's also known as Tezza. No, is he a suspect? Could you look at the photograph, please? Jeff said Princess Joanna was accusing me of meeting with some criminal. Is this him, is it? Well, you don't recognise him from the bowling club. I might have seen him there. It's a pretty mixed clientele. So you do frequent the bowling club? I go there sometimes to unwind. Hmm? Don't you think that Joanna's old enough to get a life of her own? Stop interfering with her father's? Excuse me. Parish residence. I'm sorry, he's in a meeting at the moment. Can I take a message? It's your ex. She's agitated and she wants to see you about the figures. Here you go. Oh, thanks. Uh, one thing to say to you. It's not your fault. What, what is it? They both love you, but yeah. it's not about you, you know? And when the divorce is over and the poison's out of the system, things will settle down. What, what poison are you talking about? Well, Bev's furious, because Jeff's accountant's been querying the value of all their joint assets, and uh, Jeff sent over some document for um, Bev to sign. And... Surprise me. Look, we've both got to come out of this able to live reasonable lives. Right. Just you listen agree? to me, will you? Oi! Oi! Your daughter's trying to talk to you. Yeah, uh, I've got things to do. Why are you doing this, Mummy? Just driving him away. Time you took your own advice, eh? Uh, sorry. Sorry. Ah, uh, I got rabbit food here. Acme leaf and grass. Uh, it's mine. I Men even eat from a different planet. It's enough to make me try women. Well, when you do, can I watch? Yeah, that's what I mean. Men. Dealing with a gender that eats sausage sandwiches. Look, um, I think Shaylee's cheating on Dad with Tezra Rourke. She'd have to be desperate. I want to follow her tonight. Do you want to give me a hand? I'm taking her in now and putting a few questions to her. Just tell PJ in the morning. 
You'll know what to do. Michelle is in his father's girlfriend. Yeah, his father's dead. You think that'd stop her? Dad? Gotta talk. Yeah, and don't tell me to wait for the commercial break, okay? Uh. Dad! Uh. Yeah. What happened? Uh. Are you okay? Uh. Push down, push down, push Have you found a rock? Well, we checked his address with his parole officer. He was chucked out two weeks ago. Oh, figures. And get this, the person who chucked him out, Lowell Nixon. What, well, Lowell's a landlady now, is she? We also checked out Derek Hobson's place, but he's not there. Yeah, and where's Shayla? Well, she left the bowling club ten minutes before we got there. She made quite a scene. Well, establishing an alibi, I guess. Surely don't think Shayla Sims is capable of this. Yeah, I don't know anything about her, Mum. None of us do. Husband is uh, stable. He's uh, also out of danger. You can visit a uh, short time only. Jeff, oh. listen, I am. Um, I know this is really difficult, but can you tell us what happened? Uh, you know, I, was, I was watching the footy and I uh, heard a noise. I got up and uh, he rushed me. Did you, um, did you recognize him? Uh, he, had his, uh, he had his face covered. And the weapon? Oh, I saw that, mate. Yeah. It was all I could see. It was one of my own kitchen knives. Okay, you must uh, leave now. I'd like to stay, if you don't mind. Uh, just sit by the bed. Sure. Can I see him? I'm his partner. I want to see him. Uh, the lady with him, is, is she not wife? Ms. Sims is my father's accountant. I'm afraid it's family only, shall we? Also, we, uh, we need a word. You were seen at 8 p.m. in conversation at the bowling club with Mr. Terence O'Rourke. What do you say to that? I talked to lots of people at the club. It's a very sociable place. Well, previously, I showed you a photograph of Mr. O'Rourke. You denied knowing him. I'm now going to show you that photograph again. Both Constable Parrish and myself saw you talking to him, Miss Sims. It's a bad likeness, but yes, this does look like a guy who hangs out there. He was sitting next to you. That's what he does. He's basically a sad little man who hits on me. He seemed quite responsive. Responsive to that, as if, in his dreams. I'm polite to strangers because you never know when they can get violent. Uh, you know he's got a criminal record. Doesn't surprise. Um, following your conversation with Mr O'Rourke, he was observed leaving the club. We later attended the club and were told that you left shortly after 11, following an altercation with the barmaid. I gave her a 50 and Miss Thickey tried to give me change for 20. Well, the manager came to sort it out. Everything was fine. Then you left the premises. Yes. Where'd you go? To Jeff's place. Hmm? There were police cars outside. Crime scene tape, like in the movies. Police inside, I... I just freaked. Why was that? Because Jeff Parrish. Believe it or not, he's the love of my life. Jonesy, fingerprints are lifted apart from the knife block in Jeff's kitchen. They've got a match. Tesoro Raw. Well, can I... No. Sergeant? No. Boss. I don't know the question, but Sergeant Gallagher's just answered it for a while.
Ah, you're just in time. Ever seen a nicer slab than that? G'day, Jonesy. You tell him. Beej, you'll never see a nicer slab than that. Oh, so where's Tezo Raw? He's out of a job. What? Not shown for work. I think he might have a bit of an allergy in that direction. Well, do you know where he lives? Right here. Ever since Lowell chucked him out, he's been living here on site in his van. Mind you, she might have taken him back. But... No, not since last night. Yeah, well, he's been hanging around here like a bad smell. I'll even pay him for a massage, if you can believe that. And where does Lowell give this massage? Not to me. Just tell me. Uh, rent's a room at the steam packet. I'm losing custom. Time's money in my business. OK, well, I'm sorry, Lowell, but if your boyfriend goes around stabbing people... He's not my boyfriend. OK, uh, Jonesy, can you uh, do the honours? Yeah, I'd love to. This way. So she does Reiki massage. Okay, so can you make a few discreet inquiries and see if she offers any other services? Well, if she does, Shaylee's going to be all right. Hmm? Dad's got one of these cards on his fridge. Yes, Mr. Parrish is one of my clients. He's a very lovely man. And how did you come to discover you were rendering these services? Well, no need to be sarcastic. I did a weekend course. A whole weekend? And I'm doing part two next month on the spiritual aspects. Oh. Did uh, Mr Parrish walk in off the street or was he recommended? Oh, another client. She's very smart, an accountant. She's actually advising me on money matters. Uh -huh. The name of the accountant? Well, there's such a thing as Monsieur Patient Privilege, you know? Charlie Sims. If you already knew, why'd you ask? To hear the sound of your lovely voice, Lowell. Now, tell us about you and Tezra Rourke. Mm, he rented a room and didn't pay, so I tossed him out. Me not being the Salvation Army. And? Oh, he's a sleazoid. I caught him once going through my knickers drawer and he said he was looking for matches. And now we're looking for him. I don't know where he is. Oh, I don't. Lowell, Tezza and Shaley have been seen together at the bowling club the last couple of nights. Right? Any ideas why? No. Lowell, a man has been stabbed. That's attempted murder. And if he dies, it's murder. You don't want to be an accessory to that, do you? Well, Shaylee said she had a bad debt and asked me if I knew someone would collect it for her. Then you suggested Tezza. Well, he owed me money and I thought if he got some, he'd pay me. Yeah, I didn't know he was going to stab someone, did I? We did have a bad debt. And I stupidly thought about hiring Mr. O'Rourke, and then I didn't go through with it. Really? Why is that? Because he was so dumb, I knew things would get out of hand. But then you had repeated contact with him. He got the hots for me, started stalking me, threatened to go to you guys about the bad debt thing if I wasn't nice to him. Oh, so you paid him off? I gave him what I was going to give him to collect the debt. Two payments? The first was from an ATM. I... I could only get so much, and last night I gave him the other half. And then he went and stabbed Jeff Parrish. He's a lunatic. He was saying, if only Jeff was out of the way. I thought it was all talk. You know, men say that kind of thing to me all the time. Can I take out an intervention order against him? I'm really scared. St David's have found Tezza O'Rourke's van abandoned on that back road near Rabbit Creek. Oh, you better tell PJ. Yeah. Joe? Yeah. Joe? We just come from Tezza's abandoned van. Oh, yeah? Mm, crime scene said someone took away a main piece of evidence. I just wanted to see if anyone here recognised it. It's got a sort of crane symbol burned into the handle. Well, a, a crane like a bird? A crane like a derrick. What? An oil derrick. Yeah. That's Derek Hobson's trademark symbol. Derek. Derek. Huh, oh, th this is the bloke who's not really a mate of you. Oh, just give me a break, PJ. Something must have happened to Tezza. He's missing, and, and Derek's blood-stained shovel is found in his abandoned van. So either Derek is really thick, or someone's trying to sell him up. 
You blokes come to see me? Yeah, Mr Hobson. This would belong to you, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's mine. We're going to have it back. Well, I wouldn't hold your breath. See, uh, we're looking for Tezza. He's missing. And this was his last known address. Strictly speaking, his van was. Derek, Derek, let me explain your little problem here, mate. You see, we found Tezza's van about a half a click from here. It was abandoned. And inside, there was a bloodstained shovel, which you admitted to owning. Something's happened to him, it wasn't me. PJ, there's dirt on that shovel as well. If Tez has been killed, he could be buried here. When someone disappears and we find freshly poured concrete, what's our first thought? There is no way he's under that concrete. Joe, it's my slab. I am not digging it up. What, and you want to live here? Not knowing who's under it? Oh, I forgot, you don't believe in ghosts. We'll all just right, leave all it. All right, don't, don't go on about it. All right, Jones. Get a warrant. Give no, it a rest. No, no, I should never have listened to you. I should never have listened to you. Take it, Tezza wasn't in residence. Go to the top of the class. Well, think positive. Now we know he wasn't under the slab, he's got to be somewhere else, right? Brilliant, Sherlock. Well, so maybe he was transported in the van. But he wasn't in the van, nor in the vicinity of the van. So we widened the search, which is what we should have done before we dug up my slab. How many times? Hey, hey. Tezza was last seen leaving the bowling club, right? The big fat envelope that Shaylee gave him, right? Right. Soon after that, Joe's dad gets stabbed. Doesn't see his attacker, but Joe sees what looks like Tezza's van leaving the scene. So yeah. let's just say for argument's sake that Tezza did stab Jeff. Yeah, well, that's mm -hmm. fair enough. Right. So he, he drives back to the building site. Someone whacks him with a shovel and puts him back in his own van. Well, the van was found very close to Dad's winery. So? Well, there's no one there at night. Got something? Computer. Some discs haven't been here long. Myrtle Creek Accounts Generation B. They're from the winery, Berg. One better. Tesser O'Rourke. I really don't see how I can help you. Well, we'll see, won't we? PJ, correspondence files from Myrtle Creek confirm this is the computer. You got the computer back? That's wonderful news. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Sergeant. Miss Sims? Yeah, I wouldn't mind being in on the interview. Let me so, you're happy about the computer being found? Of course I am. It'll save a week's work. Even though someone say, erase the hard disk. Mm, you can always get back a lot. If you really want to erase a hard disk, put an axe through it. Or throw it into a creek. That's where we found it. In a creek. Some people. I agree, some people. Toss a perfectly good computer in the creek and toss a friend of yours after it. Friend. Terence O'Rourke. We found his body 20 metres from the computer. Body? Meaning he's dead? Someone took a shovel to him. I'm sorry. Sorry? You're scared of him. You wanted to take out an intervention order. Just because someone behaves like an idiot doesn't mean you want them dead. Still no go. Well, when he set up my computer when I was a kid, he used 11 Joe 11. Bingo. I can't believe you're still using that. OK, we're looking at the general ledger. How's it going? Oh, more to the point, how are you going? I think she dumped the computer. I think she killed Tezza. But she's ultra cool. We need extra leverage. PJ, have a look at this. What do you make of that? The PC stands for? 
Petty cash. I can't believe this. So, obviously, the winery doesn't require $5,000 a fortnight petty cash. What do you think? Dad, you must have checked your bank statements. Look, I've got an accountant for that. It's so upfront. How did you think she was going to get away with it? Maybe she thought you weren't going to be around. <sighs> Chuck the bloody book at her. Jeff's never going to press charges. Sorry. He does want you charged. And that makes you a gone goose. Nothing to say. Well, it suits me. Because Homicide want to talk to you about the murder. First law of forensic science, Shaley. Every contact leaves its trace. I'm sure that's very interesting, but I don't know what you're talking about. I put it to you that you visited Terence O'Rourke at the building site. No. You argued. You wanted your money back because he botched the job. Jeff Parrish was still alive. He could put you away for embezzlement. You can't prove any of this. Traces, Shaylee. When you picked up the shovel, left his skin cells on the handle. He left your DNA behind. Mm. And when you struck Tezza across the head, blood spattered everywhere. Some of it on you. His DNA was on your clothes. Your skin. Maybe even your hair. So I reckon now would be a really good time to start telling your side of the story. You're a respectable person, Shaylee. Tezza was scum. He must have done something very terrible to you. I... Yes, I... I was embezzling. Mm-hmm. That's true. And I did hire O'Rourke to get rid of the computer with their accounts on it. It's stupid, I know, but I was buying time. Tessa blackmailed you. Worse. He had this thing for me. Thought it was mutual. He was jealous of Jeff and me and started making threats. And when I went to Jeff's place and I found that he'd been attacked, I knew it was O'Rourke who'd done it. And the verdict is? Two days, you go home. You pay for a home nurse. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I guess I... 24-7? <laughs> Dad, you don't need a home nurse. You've got me. I'll take some time off work and we'll get you better. With the swimming pool, I'll feel like I'm at a resort. Oh, rubbish. I've looked after him 30 years. I suppose I can last a bit longer. Well, you've got your cookware shop and... Oh, it's in safe hands. I've got an assistant. Very trustworthy. Used to be an accountant. Mm -hmm. I deserve that. <laughs> you can demonstrate your newfound cooking skills to me. You won't have to lift a finger. Mm. You know your trouble, don't you? You were such a perfect father, your daughter thinks all men are the same. <laughs> well, my work here is now done. I must return to Metropolis and my job on the Daily Planet. You're living in Mount Thomas for this, uh, Metropolis? <laughs> PJ is OK? Yeah, PJ's OK for PJ, yeah. Because uh, he not to telephone. So. Oh, well, that I can't explain. You're OK about me looking after Jeff, aren't you? Yeah, of course I am. I think it's great. Fight for your man, I say. So what are you going to do? Think about what you just said about Dad being so perfect. Well, he turned out to be not so perfect, didn't he? So... Maybe not so perfect, the new perfect. Thanks. Next one. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that party pies don't constitute a contribution to the housekeeping. Oh, but regular-sized pies do. Well, some people say that your regular-sized pie is equivalent to your half meal. A third of a meal? 
Two pine chips. Glad to catch you two together. My room at the Fiorelli house is still vacant, I take it? No, nah, we're considering turning it into a games room. Bar, pool table, two, maybe three strippers. Right, well, I'm moving back in tonight. Yeah, Mum's going to be looking after Dad, so that house is now technically home. And I moved out of home a very long time ago. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Hold the phone here. Yeah, who found the Fiorelli house? Me, it's mine, I'm moving back. What about the swimming pool? You're going to miss it. What, after Shaylee's used it? <laughs> No. But he said he was going to be in Melbourne overnight. I'll try him on his mobile. Yeah, OK, thanks. Mm. Uh, sorry, I must have a wrong number. I was after Jeff Parrish. Right, well, when he gets out of the shower, can you tell him that the winery's been broken into and he needs to meet the police there? Mount Thomas 900 to Mount Thomas 509. My father's taking a shower at his accountant's house, but once he gets his pants on, he'll not out join you. Am I missing something? My father's accountant's named Shaylee Sims. She's the same age I am and built like every pathetic middle-aged man's fantasy. I don't suppose you've got her phone number. Hey, look, there could be half a dozen innocent explanations. Name one. You're going to need my help at the winery. Yeah, boss, go on. Name one. Joe, I thought you were fingerprints. Yeah, they're on their way. So uh, what have we got here? I think I've got a constable sticking her bib in. I just thought I could help her. Dad, so glad you had your mobile on. Hi, uh, Jeff. Okay. If we uh, could just establish what's missing. I'll handle this, Jeff. Shall we? Look, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry you had to find out about Shaylee this way. Yeah, well, I'm not your mother. Not your wife, either. Mind you, my mother is. Funny, that. I was trying to find the right way to tell you. Yeah, well, it's just so demeaning, lying to me like you're a teenager. Anyway, you better come inside, see what's missing. Obviously, the computer. It's a Pentium 2 and laser printer. I can give you the serial numbers on both of those. Mm -hmm. They've ratted the petty cash tin. It's $137.60. That's very precise. Oh, Shaylee's always precise. She's the best accountant I've ever had. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's true. But they've burned. I um, couldn't say yet. Well, I need a complete list of the stolen items. Sure. Jeff, uh, how long has Charlotte been with you? Uh, six months. I decided with the plumbing business and the winery I needed someone full time, and she came highly recommended. Oh. oh, come on, it wasn't her. Look, she's very well paid, and her own computer's worth far more than the missing one. Oh, well, I wasn't implying anything. And uh, if it's about our personal relationship, then I don't think you're in a position to talk, Detective. I'm not the one running around breaking young women's hearts. <clears throat> if, if you'd prefer to talk to someone else. Look, it was obviously kids after a free computer and any cash that was going. Or maybe an ex-employee. Well, no one's been fired lately. Well, what about the person that Ms Sims replaced? Well, there wasn't one. The Hales did their own accounts. You know, <laughs> shoebox, uh, cash book. Talk about a mess. Well, you separate from your wife and you got yourself a young girlfriend. Uh, any hard feelings there? Oh, well, Bev's supposed to have done this for revenge. Is there a divorce pending between you two? Uh, yeah, it's... it's an option. Look, I really don't want this leaking back to Joe, OK? I mean, there's no possible connection. Well, there might be if there was a disagreement over the book value of the winery. All right. So now I'm supposed to be trying to diddle Bev out of her entitlements. Jeff, look, look we, we, we're just trying to find a motive here. Now, do you have any problems with business competitors? No. Look, it's 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 an inconvenience.